morning, everyone. I can see you're already collaborating. I hear lots of great ideas from um, the wonderful, inspirational speech we had this morning with Eric. You're in the right place if you are interested in the Google Guide to Education apps leveling the playing field for challenge learners. And I have a short goo.gl if you want to join this um, slideshow. And then you'll be able to save it and you'll have all the links and everything. So it's goo.gl forward slash five capital R capital N lowercase f lowercase f capital F. And I like goo.gl because it will give you a QR code and it also gives you details on who, um, how many people have accessed your page when they've been using it. So if you have an assignment or you have a notice for parents and you really want to get some feedback about how many people have looked at that page, if you give them that short goo.gl, you'll get some good details and I can show you what that looks like. Everybody's good? So I'm going to jump out of the slideshow, which I will do frequently. Um, here's my information about all my goo.gl shorteners. And let me just refresh this. So it shows my details that um, people just started to log in and platforms and looks like in the United States four of you have gotten in and it's all on Chrome and we're all on Macs. So just to get a um, feel for the audience, I know I have an elementary person and um, make, hold me to the fact that I will give you elementary suggestions as well. But how many people are elementary? Anyone else? Middle school and high school. Administrators? Okay. All right. So I love Google Chrome. I love Google Apps, and I think one, the biggest game changer um, for my students is that everything that they use in Chrome and Google is um, able to be collaborative. And I think that is the game changer, that my students are collaborative with one another, but more importantly, they're collaborative with their teachers, with their ed techs. Um, and we're able to process and work together on all of their assignments. And just kind of keep that in mind, that that has been the game changer. Um, as I was building this presentation and making some changes to it, I was comparing um, a student assignment from four years ago with a student assignment today, and they're light years apart. The students today, because they've been collaborating in Google, Docs and Google Slideshows for the past four years are um, producing better quality work. Um, I don't think my instruction has changed any differently. I don't think the classroom teacher instruction has changed any differently. It's just that we've made um, their work, their Google Docs, their Google Slideshow, the information, the content more accessible to them and easier for them to manipulate and understand because they're doing it more frequently. And I think four years ago when I was using Chrome and Google Apps and getting students logged in and learning how to collaborate, the learning curve was on the collaboration part and not on the content part. I think we've moved beyond that as our students have progressed over the past four years being a GAFE school that now they're not focused on the collaboration, they're focused on the content. 
So that's the long picture, long-term picture that we see. So you're going to see how to use Google Slides, Forms, Spreadsheets, Google Docs, Google Sites, Google Search. These are all examples um, from my high school. And I work in special education, social studies, science, and this year I'm co-teaching in English classes. Um, not a science class, but an English class. So Google tools have allowed me to bring that differentiation and that accessibility into classrooms and work with classroom teachers. I'm not the content expert, but I provide that platform vehicle for students to be able to get that information back to teachers. So I'm going to set the stage because it's all about our, oops, our students. Hold on. I need speakers. Talk about. Okay, so show me how you choose an article. Oh, sorry. I just find one that I find interesting. This is a student who's explaining how she uses News ELA and how she used um, Too Long Didn't Read, which doesn't exist anymore. I'm so sorry, but. I hope there's something that's going to come out that's going to be a built-in app in Google, the Google Suite, to replace Too Long Didn't Read. I know that was one of Eric's favorite apps as well. Yeah. Sorry. And once you choose your article, what else do you do? Um, I put it on the lowest reading level because there are different reading levels there. Okay. And then I start to read it. All right. Is there another app that you like to use before you read it? Um, yes. TLDR. What does that mean? Flip it over. The child with memory problems? Right. All right. So can you find your um, extension? Page. New ZLA is an app. You open it up and you're going to go to help. And you're going to choose your article and go to, yeah, yeah, your reading level and then add too long, didn't read, and show us what happens with the slot. <coughs> And I won't show you that because it's not available anymore. But Victoria is able to have some prompts and use that on her own. That was when she was learning how to do that two years ago. Now she's independent in her classes. And when she has a classroom article to read, she knows automatically to go into um, Rewordify, which I'll show you a little bit later. Or she also goes into News ELA to get her articles so that she can have them um, differentiated in the content area. And the News ELA is an app. News ELA is an app, and you need to, it's a free and a paid service. So thanks for mentioning that because open up another window and start you know opening these things that you can register for later. But it's a free service um, where you can do most things. I even think you can still set up a classroom in the free app. Then if you had a paid app, you're able to add your own short response questions so that you can add a writing piece. And in the paid app, it also gives you a list of your students who had the assignment. Um, you could teach them to choose their own reading level. It, it's in Lexiles. It's very easy to do. It's off on the side. And then um, in the paid app, it tells you which students have completed that assignment for you. But for the free app, which is the one that I'm still using, it's really nice to just get articles. We teach our students to use that for their health class because they do a, a weekly current health. And they're all independent on going to New ELA, going to health, and finding an article. It's 
written for or collect, collected for teens um, and middle school students. I think the lowest lexile is about 600. The highest lexile is in the 1200s. So I think if it's elementary, it would be a stretch for some of the articles at, what's a 600 lexile? Anybody? It's like fourth or fourth grade, probably. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Another um, thing, and this is uh, great for I use this at the high school, but sock uh, the sock puppets, and this is an app on the iPad, and. Uh, the reason I was using this was to get the student to be more communicative and she needed to answer questions and be able to do that reciprocal conversation. So I asked her about okay. her learning. All right, so have your teachers asked you how you like to learn best? Um, my teachers have never asked me how I like to learn best, so it's like they don't know like my learning style and what what works best for me. Like they've never asked me how I learn best. I've never been asked. Okay, I'm gonna ask you. Name one way that you like to learn best. One way that I like to learn best is if I have um. I hand out in front of me and by listening to instructions and just by listening um, to the lesson. I asked Izzy that when she was in eighth grade. That was four years, three years ago. And it's the things that she said as an eighth grader are still true today. I mean, she knows exactly. And I don't think it was that people had never asked her about, you know, how she learns best. But I think that was a revelation for her. Oh, I'm in charge of this. And I, I like this one as well. Okay, so now, what makes it easy for your brain to learn in school? Um, what makes it, what makes it easy for my brain to learn in school? And when there's no distraction, and I can focus on the assignment at hand, and everything is just calm, and everything goes smoothly. That's how all our classrooms are. No distractions. Everything's <laughs> calm. The learner is in charge. Um, but you can see she had to manipulate the characters. She was engaged in this. She had to manipulate the voices and this, you know, the um, back and forth conversation. So, sock puppets. Oops, on your iPads. Sure. Let's go back to her. Did she did she do that topic herself? Was there was there a prompt for her to do that or? Yeah, I was um, I was working with her to to see what kinds of things would help her transition to the high school and to see what kind of technology would help her. Um, so she was also a speech and language and an LD student. So I was working on that back and forth conversation, comprehension, vocabulary. And Sock Puppets was a nice way to have her do that back and forth conversation. Plus once you're done with that, I was able to export, upload it to YouTube. So it's on my YouTube channel and available, you know, from for her to go back and look at, which I think well, because her face isn't there. Right. She, it's a, a safety net. Yes. Yes. So cool. great tool. All right. So now I'm going to show you some of the ways that I've used the Google App Suite. And what I really like about this, and you know, this is so old school now, but it's something we take for granted. It's one login. Um, you know. Prior to five years ago, you had to have Kid Blog, then you had to have Quizlet, then you had to have um, po a podcast, you had to have a Zoho Writer. 
you had all of these logins for teachers and students, and they got lost in their passwords. Um, Eric mentioned how Chrome is always updating, so as you're watching here, these are all my extensions that are updating or not updating. <clears throat> So I want to show you how I use a Google site. Um, I co-taught a biology class a few years ago, and it was an alt ed special ed class. And I know this was successful because two years ago I saw one of my students out in the community, and she was working, and she said, you know what, that biology class that you and Miss Parrott had, and I'm there, yeah, I remember that class. And she said, I never ever would have passed that class if you hadn't had this grade 10 biology learn on your own. I said, how come? Well, you know, if you remember, I didn't come to school a lot. And they, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's why we designed it. We struggled with, okay, today we have six kids, tomorrow we're going to have 12 kids. We're not going to keep going backwards to for our other kids who were at school. So let's come up with a way that they can be independent kids who've missed school, and they can make up their work. So our solution was we had a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you miss Wednesday, then go to this list, pick out something, and that's going to be what you'll turn in for your assignment for a Wednesday. If you miss Thursday, make sure that you, you know, go to Thursday. It was about student choice. They weren't in school. They had to make it up, or if they were home and had access, they could do this at home. And so behind the scenes, because they had to email their work to the instructor, um, their work was getting done. They were successful and passed the class. Once I built that, we never, the teacher and I never went back and added things or changed things. There were enough things on here from the uh, beginning that they were able to use that and be successful on the days that they weren't in school. So that was a Google site. Everything was there that they needed. Because I'm in special education, I have some students who go to ESY, our summer school program. Um, I don't know if York has a snow day. You know, if you're not in school, you have snow day assignments. But you could do the same kind of thing for snow day. So my student is at. ESY. Is that distracting that flashing? Okay. Um, my students at ESY, I'm not there, but I've made her assignments and I want to connect with her and uh, the teacher. And I have this site. Um, she's able to talk to me about her assignment for the day. The ed tech can ask me questions. And, you know, we can make it fun. I post some pictures of my piglets and, you know, get back in touch with her. So, again, it's another way. It's a placeholder, filing cabinet. I can put all the information for assignments right here and easy to do that. Another way to use sites is these are the resources that we have for our um, learning lab, Skills Cafe. So, we spend a lot of time with our freshmen introducing them to this so that they can see all the tools that we're using at the high school. Once kids become aware of it, parents become aware of it, I really don't see that much use during the week, especially now since using Chrome and students bookmark things and their Chrome browser customization travels with them. Once they've set things up and personalized it, um, they don't really need to come back to this site. It's more for my ed techs to come back to or classroom teachers to see what are you using that um, your students have access to. So there's some great resources on here. You'll now have access to that. Um, this is a great site. How many science people do we have in here or students that write um, lab reports. So special ed is for your IEP students. 504, you get some accommodations for those students. But universal design for learning is for everybody. It's about differentiating um, the instruction, differentiating the output, differentiating your assessments. 
And so um, CAST, C-A-S-T, is uh, an organization in Cambridge, Mass. And they've this, um, designed this um, website for, specifically for the science curriculum and writing lab reports. You need to have you need to have a login. You can register your students. It's all free. The one thing that they're missing is they don't have a built-in graph maker. So if you're doing a lab report and that part of the assignment is you need that, um, we teach kids to go to the website make a graph. But do you see this little floating toolbar right here? If I highlight some of my text, this becomes available to students when they log in. It's supposed to be reading. Oh, maybe I will log in. Okay. It's not, that part's not working today. So it would read to them whenever text you highlighted it so that it started to read Yeah. It, it should. But let me just show you what's available in the um, Cast Science Writer. When I had my freshman students in physical science, I had my IEP students log into this and their lab reports were 100% better than the general population because they had all of these prompts. They also had these little characters that would help give them a hint. This is what your report looks like so far. You can click rename at the right side of each section to rename your report sections. You can also click on the section heading itself to continue working on that section. You can always return to this page by clicking the project overview link. So there are three little characters that come out and give the student that one-to-one -one instruction or the repeating that they need. Um, here's the hypothesis. It talks about all the things that are important to have in the hypothesis. I love that it gives you this checklist on the right. Um, is it everything spelled correctly? That's not one of my top priorities when we first begin this. Um, students are able to save this. Once they have their login, they save it online. The teacher can come help edit. Um, the papers aren't lost. They just email it to the classroom teacher. So this is a really great feature. It's only available as a science lab report. A uh, couple of things that it would be good for for your st would be good for all students, not just special ed students, but just teaching them to follow directions, be independent, get some support from that online um, help. And then there's uh, the side where they can print or they can email it. Any questions on that? Again, free resource, free site, and you can put your class, your students in that. Not a Google tool, but an awesome tool. I collaborate with social studies teachers, and this is a Google site. We've been sharing this calendar of assignments in a Google site for the past four years. Now, I have to talk about Classroom. Any of you using Google Classroom right now? Okay, so Classroom has kind of made this obsolete, but the one disadvantage for Classroom is that your parents don't have access to what you're putting in Classroom. So my social studies teachers still like this option. Um, this calendar website is still from last year because we aren't in school until September 1st, 2nd. But what they'll do is they'll put everything on here. And so our students now, if they're homesick, 
and they see that they're going to miss the UN scavenger hunt, kids will email the teacher or email me and say, I don't feel well today, but what can I do for my social studies class? They go to the um, calendar and they click on the link. They can do the scavenger hunt at home. The permission forms are there. The links to the movies are there. Pretty much all their, everything that the kids and parents need to know is listed here. We've thought about using Google Calendar, but it was too clunky four years ago for the classroom teachers, and you know there are five of them that are monitoring this and making changes to this on a daily or weekly basis. And they felt that the Google Calendar was too clunky, so they went to this model. A disadvantage when you have a snow day or a flood day, you've got to update you know, and push everything ahead a day. But um, the benefits outweigh the disadvantages. How far ahead would you guys post things? Um, we post through the end of that unit. So um, I'm going to say, like, one unit that we're working on it goes through uh, Columbus Day. And so you'll see all the assignments. The shell for all the assignments will be there. The attachments, like the note takers, aren't going to be there yet. Some of the, we use Juno as our um, assessment feature. And so the, those are posted but not turned on until that day. So. Okay, so you can post them up on there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then bumping forward, you have to do that. You have to start with the end and move one, then move the next. And yeah. The next and yeah. yeah. That is a real disadvantage. But how many snow days, snow days do you have? Um, it also allows them to be flexible with if an assignment takes three days instead of um, two days. Then they have some wiggle room where they, you know, just say this activity is going to continue, and then they move something else. But this is their fifth year using this model. Um, so for five different teachers, I think they really, you know, have seen the the benefit of it. Definitely, we see the benefit with kids. Um, I'm not sure about York, but. In Wells, we have a lot of families who own their own businesses, and so they have family time whenever, whenever there's a good vacation, whenever their business you know, closes down. So we have kids going on extended holidays from November until May, and you know, those kids will be off for a week to 10 days, and they're expected to get their assignments online. Also, it preps your kids for online learning for post-secondary school. And when we did an, a survey with our students three years ago, one of the downfalls, they said they didn't have enough preparation for doing online as assignments. So this is getting them ready for that blended learning. Good question. Any other questions about? Okay, this has to be my favorite part of the Google Suites, the Google Apps. If you have challenged learners, if you give them a writing assignment and a piece of paper, they just freeze. They, they don't know where to begin, um, so they procrastinate, put that off, they're not even going to use it, and then the day or after it's due, they uh, start to say, oh, I have this assignment. So this is about using the slideshow, Google slideshow. This is a high school example, but you can use it for everything. Um, when I was at Tilton Academy a couple of weeks ago, an elementary teacher said, oh my gosh, I'm going to so use this project with my students as they introduce themselves to their classmates. So she created a slideshow. Every single kid got their own slide. That first day of school, everyone's going to put, they have to answer three questions and put in a picture. These are third graders. And they're going to introduce themselves to the class using a Google slideshow. And then it's all together. 
it's all in one spot. So this is what I do. I take the classroom teacher uh, directions and I put it into a slideshow. Challenge learners, let me just make this a little bit bigger. Um, challenge learners love points, kids, all kids. They love gaming, they love that challenge, you know, what am I going to get? So I threw, I think this assignment might be worth 350 points. I mean, it's still based on A, B, C, D, but just that big number gets the kids excited. So they get 50 points for finding vocabulary, finding the meaning. Then this is, this is lifted right from the teacher directions. So I put the teacher directions right on one slide. So my students are only looking at the directions for the assignment on one slide. They can choose to do slide 15 first. They can choose to do slide 14, 13. They can do it in random order. They pulled quotes from the story. Again, here are the points. Okay, I'm going to get 30 points today for doing this. <clears throat> um, Eric has already talked about this, your personal learning network. I'm not an English teacher, so I went out on the web and I found um, O'Brien's book, The Things They Carried. A classroom teacher had made a quiz, online quiz. So I just pulled the quiz, put the link right into the slideshow, had my students do the quiz. All they had to do was show their score to an adult in the room. They wrote their score down. Um, that saved me probably an hour coming up with questions and answers. Then images, our students are visual learners. We know that. So pull that in. Normally in an essay, you wouldn't be pulling in a lot of images for an English class. But that was something that um, was really important to them. A recommendation, would you recommend this? And then they got extra points if they wrote an Amazon review. That kid has never written that much information about any book ever. Now he's a senior next, year, uh, next week, and we'll be able to pull this out and say, okay, remember you've done this before. This is what your senior year, World Lit, is going to look like. You're going to be adding more information. We did not go into music because we just didn't. They were um, there were three boys that were in a small group working on this, and we were really focused on the content. When it came time for them to present, the three of them presented together, um, and we didn't do music for the time period. Okay, it would. You had one child that was maybe nonverbal. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. I like that. So that's not the most the coolest part. This is the really cool part. The first they had three written assignments this year about books. This could be for any grade level. This slideshow, you know, is definitely manageable at elementary. The second and third books that they did for this English class, the teacher wanted them to start with a start with an essay or to end with an essay. So you have to, you have to watch this. So I, I, I go to the boys. All right, this is we're going to take all of your information and we're going to pack it into an essay. And this is where I go into my lesson on transitions. So we go to file right in your slideshow. We go to download. I don't know if you've ever seen this feature in the slideshow before, but I'm going to move down to plain text. And before I click on plain text, I warn the kids, all right, this is going to be text font for ants. Don't look at this, because all the work you've done is still going to be there. Just you know, hold your breath. Can you back up one second? Can you sure. Yep, yeah, you go to in the slideshow file, yeah, not on the top menu, and then down to download, scroll over, and then you get, you can download it 
as a PowerPoint, a PDF, PNG, JPEG, and plain text. So I've given them that prompt that, okay, don't worry about it. You, you know, all this work that you've done is going to turn into a text TXT document. It downloads on my desktop. I'm going to open it. And you can see why they would totally freak out. <laughs> They've done, you know, two, three weeks of work. What? So I does say, the whole, is that the whole PowerPoint in there? That's the whole PowerPoint. Okay. All the text, no images. OK? So then I just select all, copy. And I have them watch this. And I'm going to go out and get into documents. And do you all know this just happened a month ago? See the um, selection I have for my Google apps? Do you have the same ones as I do? Do you have your favorite ones? OK. If you don't, go down here to More. And let's just say that I want to pull Docs into my favorites. I'm going to click on it and drag it up. Keep going up. Keep going up. Uh not going up. It is up top and then yeah. Oh I think it did. Yes, it did. That's just a quick commercial. <laughs> so if there's something down in more that you want up in your easily accessible you're just going to click on it and grab it and bring it up and drop it. OK, so now that I have docs and I've copied my text, I'm going to paste the text. And even with all the teacher directions, it's, it's five pages. But the first thing I do while my student is watching, they all do everything in 14 font because they think they're going to fool their English teacher that they've actually written more. So we just go with it. Um, and I can go through and I can pull out my directions. I might pull out the vocabulary, get rid of all the vocabulary that they use. And now I can start with um, an introduction paragraph. So they all work on an introduction paragraph. Then they have this information here. We scroll down. Um, I get rid of my directions about the quotes. We put another transitional phrase in here. And then they have their quotes. I go through and get the other directions out put another transitional phrase and a conclusion. So they've had instruction ahead of time that when, we, when we're done with this, you're going to do an intro, you're going to do transitions, and you're going to do a conclusion, and your essay paper is ready to be printed and um, shared with your teacher. They have such a huge sigh of relief that you know they've completed and written an essay where they didn't start with that blank slate. So. That's, that has been a game changer. Can you make your commercial and you got your own apps? Yep. I get my apps, I don't know how it is. Well, I'm going to go to the left. How did you get yours? Did it work? She told me when she had the app. In the mail? In my, well, this is. I have a waffle here for inside my account. And then I have that, are you talking that yeah. app? Yeah. That's for my, um, that's for my apps that I've added with my extensions. Right. But I thought you pulled those down. Yeah. 
but I don't know. It, you know, it may look different. Does it look the same on your domain? Okay. Okay. Sorry. I know. Hard to keep the waffles and pancakes, hot dogs all. All right. So. My next link on here, because you'll have the slideshow, you'll be able to refer to it, shows you the slideshow to text. Now, this is another example of an English, uh, this was a senior English class, and this was an example from four years ago. So these are my challenge learners. They spend a half day at vocational school. They come back to the high school and they have to work on their essay. There's like zero buy-in for them. But what I did was I took, again, the, S the essay directions, popped them into a slideshow, and then I was in the classroom and I took pictures of everything, all the prompts that the teacher had in the classroom because by the time they came to the resource room and I said, what does that word wall look like? What word wall? I don't know. So. I mean, I've been the one to take the pictures four years ago. Now my students are able to snap. They're using their smartphones in class to get that information that they need. Yeah, like right then, I would assume some of that time you, you don't get to plan. I mean, I would oh, right. Sometimes you are really, really on. on the fly. Yeah, yeah. Um, classroom teachers are better now. Like that, the things they carry, that classroom teacher sends me the syllabus, I mean the um, directions a week ahead of time. Other classrooms that I'm in, it's on, it's on the fly. So, But because we had this for my student, again, he was able to write full information from being in class individual versus group. I had him answer everything. There are the directions. And then he pulled that whole thing together for a comparison. So normally that would not have happened. Same thing with a book review. I really like Google Slides because it doesn't have everything for all of us who work in um, Keynote. You don't have all the transitions and everything, so students really focus on the content. So same thing. This was a student who didn't come to school, but she worked on this at home because it was available to her. I gave her all of the... Gave her all the information, and she was more independent, but not in school. So she did all of this work at home. I was able to collaborate with her and um, say, OK, you need more information here. And she was pretty happy when she was successful and came into school with her um, senior English done. Another example of a book review. How many people use Prezi? Okay. So um, it's a little different than a slideshow. I like to teach my challenge learners how to use this because it's that wow factor for them. They feel really good that they've done um, something totally different than their classmates. And so this student made a Prezi. You can collaborate with Prezi's now. They just have to remember to invite you. But it kind of has a template so you can jump around with the information. And um, that's the wow factor. This is a student who would procrastinate and never get an essay done. And so this was in lieu of his essay. All right. Um, you can tell I work with <laughs> challenge learners because everything is, you know, really directed at kids are going to lose their documents or lose their information. So here's a student. Um, this was just just a Google Doc, 
Well, again, what I like about the Google Apps, everything looks the same. Your menu is the same as a doc, as a um, presentation, as a site. So you've got that learning curve that skyrockets to content, not worrying about how do I run this program. So I put all of his assignments in here. He did not come to school very often. But when he did come to school, he could see exactly what he needed to do for his assignments. Um, and can I ask you a question? Yep. Where do you put those for, you might be going to talk about this, like for those kids that aren't coming to school, where do you put this for them to access? Just in, in their own Google Drive? or? Um, I put it, I send an email to them. Yep. Also, when you create anything in Google, it gives you a link. Yep. Right? And you have to choose, is it private to them? Make sure that, you know, how many people do you want to read it? So if I want to be sure that they get it, I put it directly into their email. Okay. Um, that's the thing about Classroom. It automatically happens. You know, you just make your assignments. It's in that folder. You share that folder or send it out or assign it. Um, you know, that all happens. But things that I do are so individualized that Classroom is not going to, you know, be a benefit to me. Plus, I can control how many ed techs or how many classroom teachers are looking at that one assignment with my students. The other thing that's great about this is if I've created that doc and I make it public, it can instantly be shared as a website. I just copy and paste that link and put it on my um, on my website. All right, Google Alert. This would be really great for elementary students, high school students doing research, a team working on RTI or transitions. Any of you using Google Alerts? Okay. This is going to be a great take home for you. You find it under More, that little waffle that's in your email, and it brings you to something, google.com slash alerts. Everyone's will be personalized. And so, I create alerts about my school district. I like to know what's in the newspaper about my school district. I have um, one about autism. I do an alert on myself. I want to know when I'm being talked about on Twitter or when I am in a news article or if somebody's blogged about me. I want to know that before Eric says, hey, saw a great article about you. <clears throat> so it's an app? It's in your Google, in, in this part of the Google Waffle, and it's going to be under even more from Google, and you didn't see it there? And did you get to the big page of me? Yeah. No, I haven't seen it either. Oh. And it's going to be called Google Alert? Yep. So I just go alert.google.com. Not available. Let's try google.com alert forward slash alert. Okay. So let me just create an alert. Did it, all right, I got could, it. I got you got it. to this? I've got it with google.com. Flash alert. Flash alert. Okay. It, it, it used to be in my little waffles like three weeks ago when I did this. So if um, you find it that way where it, it's not staying somewhere, is it? No. No, I'm just. I wonder if it's. Well, I'll look for it afterwards. But if I want to create an alert, um, Let's see, Hurricane, what's the new one? E. Was it Erica? Erica. Is it K-A? No, it is K-A. 
Okay. So if you're watching, as I'm typing here, there's some um, alerts that are already created by Google that are showing up down below. So I'm going to create an alert for Hurricane Erica. My school nurse creates an alert for the flu in the winter. And she wants that news as it happens. Hurricane, we probably want to have that news as it happens. I can get automatic alert. It could just be a news. It could just be a blog. So, for example, if you're collaborating with a classroom teacher, they have a blog, you can put that name of the blog, and then you can get updates as it happens. You don't need to go back to that website. Oh, is there anything new here? Where did that alert come to? That alert is going to come to your, G your Gmail. Okay. Okay? Yeah, I'd be a little nervous about that. I would. But they, in their Google account, they would have that, wouldn't they? Yes. Okay. Yes. But I was, yep. I was thinking more in a research kind of a idea. Not For a elementary, idea. as a teacher, I would, uh, okay. I would do a research and make a page yeah. that they went to so that you vetted those. Okay. But anyways, you have all of these sources here um, for your, um, your choices. So let's delete those too. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can have it in certain languages, any region. I just want to know about Hurricane Erica in the United States. I want the best results delivered to, and it has my Gmail account right there. So it's going to deliver that to me, and it created an alert. I can trash it. I can edit it. So after, I don't want to have daily messages. I can get them, you know, every week. Do you have more than one at a time? I have eight alerts right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can have as many. You can have them for as long as you want. Any other questions on alerts? It's always good to create an alert about yourself or your classroom or your school so that you're current about that. Um, I have alerts about close reading, IEP transitions, just anything that's new and uh, buzzword in the educational community. I showed you goo.gl in the details. Um, how many people have tried voice search in Google? Okay. Great for elementary, if somebody's with them and they're searching. Great for challenge learners, kids who can't spell. So I click on the microphone. Estuary. According to Wikipedia, an estuary is a partly enclosed coastal body of brackish water with one or more rivers or streams flowing into it and with a free connection to the open sea. Estuaries form a transition zone between river environments and maritime environments. So this really was a game changer for our students who, you know, they're trying to find something and can't spell estuary and they've lost five minutes searching. So teach them to speak slowly and clearly. I am doing, this is a shameless self-promotion, but I am doing a session on Google search and alert where I go into depth about searching with images and voice and, um, you know, all the different ways that you can use these tools up here. Rewordify. So rewordify kind of has taken the place for too long didn't read. And it's rewordify.com. You can take information from a website, especially good for challenged readers. And my students are independent with this. And they take that text from a paragraph, copy it, and paste it into rewordify. And you rewordify the text. You give it some time, and all the highlighted words are words that have been 
change to a different vocabulary level. So that's really helpful. There are a ton of activities that you can also use on this Rewordify site. They'll make a close C-O-L-Z reading activity for you that just pulls the vocabulary out of that paragraph so that you can use that as a comprehension assessment. And I have about three more minutes. Any special educators in here? You're awesome. You are. <laughs> um, I have Google Forms. I'll quickly show you this. But this is on um, Google Forms has a survey component. So you can use this with your parents, with your students, a research activity. You're collecting data about your classroom, how many kids have animals at home or different colors that they like. You can make a quick form, make that available to everybody, and then it collects all your data in a spreadsheet. And so then you have all of that data without you having to go around with your clipboard and get that information. I've uh, talked about Classroom a little bit. Some of the things that we have in the Google Suite have changed because of Classroom, but Classroom isn't available to parents. And this is the last thing I'm going to leave you with. Kind of like Kane's Arcade, um, four year, five years ago, I was blogging and talking about how Chrome and Google Chrome browser are making things more accessible to handicapped kids. Somebody in New York City at Google saw my blog post, called me up and said, hey, we want to do a film about you. So here's the film that shows you never know what's going to happen. And you never know who is. Come on. <laughs> Who's looking at this stuff? Morgan was diagnosed with her learning disability at four years old, so that was pre kindergarten. When she was diagnosed, it was overwhelming, so I started researching. Everything that I found was just, you know, she'll never ride a bike, she'll never do this, she'll never do that. It's just devastating. Many of our special ed students have grown up learning that they can't do it. They've been enabled in some cases because we just haven't had tools to allow them to be independent. My job is to give them the skills and the tools to make them independent learners. Years ago, if she had a research paper to do, they would take them to the library. She was left on her own to find books, which is too overwhelming. It's a needle in a haystack for her. Just handwriting is difficult for her. So if she can speak into something, it's not a struggle anymore. It's not a fight. Women in the Revolutionary War. Voice search just takes an inefficient search and gets rid of that and goes right to the topic that they're looking for. Then they can put a reading level in and self-select what Not they're anymore. able to read and understand. They've saved time, they found something that they can read, and they've been successful. They have to have that push to see the bright side of things. She'll look and say, wow, I did that. You know, so we don't hear I can't as much as we used to. I mean, color guard. When she came home and said she wanted to go to a color guard meeting, I immediately called up the coach and said, we need to talk. Because she has uh, spatial issues and we're giving her a six foot pole. <laughs> the ego. <laughs> but she does it. She is an amazing girl. Um, she makes us proud every day. All of those things have really helped Morgan from being Morgan the student with a learning disability to Morgan the student with the possibilities for her future. Tons, not tons, dozens of great search stories that Google has um, presented <clears throat> from around the globe. So where can you begin? I'll leave you with that question. Here's some other resources that I use that aren't Google tools, but are really awesome tools. 
I believe you all have read right here in York. I believe that Eric said that's going to start up in September. So he'll be having lots of training on that, but that's an incredible um, resource. And this is how you can get a hold of me, Twitter, Facebook, and for old PLN information, you can check out the podcast from Seedlings that I was involved with for many years with Bob Sprankle and Alice Barr. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, do you know how to get a hold of me? And good luck with your Google resources and meeting the needs of your challenged learners. Thanks. Sorry, I snapped the pictures at your end. That's okay. <laughs>